Good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast. I must have got off track right from the beginning. Okay, let's focus, shall we? Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 462. And the topic today is what is a conscious relationship and why would you want one? No, I won't jump ahead. Um, <laughs> let me introduce myself first and get started. Um, and by the way, this is a Facebook Live initially. You may be watching it on YouTube or listening to a podcast later on. I'll explain those links later on. So before I can begin, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Hey, Huntley, good to see you here, sir. Um, I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do a talk called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Actually, I think I call it now Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. Should be the way it is. Anyway, so every day I do these do this talks. Today's number 462. So I'm way over a year's worth now and heading towards 500, it looks like. And the topic is generally spin towards women a lot of the times, but this case, as in quite often doing now, this works for both sides of the conversation, men and women. And so the topic today is, what is a conscious relationship and why would you want one? Um, I keep getting this hit to say something. I'm going to hold off for a second. There's something I want to say before that. Um, oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, they are usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live. Um, actually, I'm planning to do a talk tomorrow earlier with a friend of mine, a dual broadcast, as well as my usual 5 p.m. talk. We'll be totally spontaneous to see what happens. So, let's jump in, shall we? Um, the thing I keep trying to avoid saying, <laughs> which is the unspoken PS for this, is... What is a conscious relationship? Why would you want one? And the piece after that is, you might not. So I finally, I finally say it, so it's out of my head now, so I can get on with the topic at hand. The thing about conscious relationships are they're very intentional, which kind of makes sense, because they're conscious. You, call, you could call them awakened, or you could call them woke. Um, you could call them, well, I don't want to say they're advanced, because that would imply that the other ones are not. But I want to make sure you get the point of what this is about. This conversation I'm giving you is for people who have done some sort of personal growth work usually, or had a spiritual awakening, or have done some other path journey um, exploration to discover there's more to life than just simply getting hooked up with somebody and spending the rest of your life with them. Because an, a, I don't even want to say an unconscious relationship, because that doesn't sound very good either, You're like both both flat out, like, you know, sting stars. I would say a perhaps... Um, non-conscious relationship maybe I'm going to play with what the other term would be basically an, un an unawakened relationship which again in the adverse that would sound like being asleep which in a way it is because those default relationships the codependent ones I talked about yesterday um, in number 461 the codependent model is a paradigm where we are set up for a relationship where we cannot live without the other, live without the other, the other person in fact if the other person leaves we are heartbroken torn apart rendered asunder, unable to function, and we can't live without the other person. Now, that may sound romantic, it's actually very detrimental. And it's that place and relationship where being able to love somebody so much that you can live without them is the goal. That's what conscious relationship really is about, is you love somebody from the place of wholeness. And this is the, um, the fork in the road, as it were. One way of, of, of being in a relationship is where you believe yourself to be incomplete and you look to the other person to make you feel whole, to complete you, as Jeremy Guy would, Guy would say. Um, I think it was Jeremy Guy. That you complete me, that whole me metaphor, that paradigm, puts you in a place of being very limited because it means you can't be whole yourself, which is a lie, to be totally transparent. And I'm going to recap everything I said yesterday. You have to watch yesterday's broadcast for that. But I want to make sure you get the point that codependent and that enmeshment is not a, not a very awakened or conscious relationship. A conscious relationship, the way I would define it most simply, and there's more to talk about than this, but the most simple way I'd say about this, a conscious relationship is where each individual partner in the relationship, before they even get together, is already loving themselves, appreciating themselves, taking care of themselves, honoring themselves, owns their own stuff, their own space, works through their own issues, takes, or takes responsibility for their own um, upsets, emotional challenges, issues, etc. And is someone who basically is living their life on their own terms comfortably. 
when they meet somebody else who's doing the same thing, when they come together, they're not going, oh my God, where have you been all my life? I can't survive without you. you, you complete me. They don't say that because they're not doing that. What they're saying is, in simple terms, or opposed to this effect is, I've been looking for someone like you to play with, someone to dance with, someone who will be an equal with me, someone who will explore life together, we can add to each other's lives above and beyond what we can do for ourselves. Because the thing about relationship is additive, not filling up gaps we think we have. And that conscious relationship, that choice of being in a relationship where you're conscious of the journey, means that one, the other person is not filling up something you're missing. Two, you don't need them to live. Yes, you love to have them with you so you can live. Different from need to live. And third, when things happen, which do happen in relationships, upsets, hurt feelings, judgments, harsh words, etc., etc., the reality is you don't immediately go to defensiveness, jumping on the other person saying, well, you're wrong, I'm right, you're wrong, it's your fault, I'm, I'm not taking responsibility. A conscious relationship is you take responsibility for, for your part and the other part of the, of the other person so that you can both come to the, back to the table, back to the conversation from a whole place. And the conversation becomes one of, okay, that didn't work, what can we do differently? Versus, I'm never going to talk to you again, which is what codependence is a lot about. This trap that we fall into with relationships Somehow we've got to simply strip away our autonomy, strip away our self-love, our self-respect, our self-reliance, and make the other person responsible for that. And that's effed up, to be totally transparent. So choosing a conscious relationship isn't for the, meek, isn't for the weak of heart. And I'm saying this intentionally to say that for some people out there, as I mentioned earlier, maybe you don't want to be in a conscious relationship because maybe it's safer to be in one that is not conscious. It's just comfortable. Because being in a conscious relationship may look uncomfortable. It may look very uncomfortable to you if you haven't chosen that path. However, if you are looking for a conscious relationship and you know what it's about, it's extremely comfortable. Because you start realizing that you're not accountable to other per people's feelings all the time. Yes, you have responsibility to the other person's feelings. But it's not your fault all the time. I'm saying all the time, but be careful because you may do something stupid. Because even conscious relationships, people do stupid things. But the thing about being conscious is that if you're conscious enough, you realize you just did something and you own up to it. You don't walk around ignorant, bl blissfully unaware, and think the other person's at fault. No, that's not the way we play the game. Conscious relationships are relationships where both partners, both partners together, are choosing into a much higher game, a much higher way of living, a much higher way of playing than your average relationship. A conscious relationship is one where both partners will be growing together and individually in the relationship. They will become more whole, more expressive, more able to function, and also more aware of how their patterns work because they'll be reflected back to them by their partner in a way that is accessible, not um, reactive. Big difference. So a conscious relationship is a choice. Personally, I couldn't do any other way. And I've been in, in this journey of personal growth and seminars since 1984, December actually, 1984. So coming up now on my 20, 34, 34 years, jeez. <laughs> Just realizing I've been doing this. So for me, relationship has to be conscious. I've been happily alone and living my own life because I've taken care of myself. I learned that I can live on my own. I don't need somebody else. That's the other thing, by the way. There's an argument that was, and it was an argument happening on one of my posts a few days ago where the other person was speaking from the perspective, at least that's the way I heard it was, speaking from the perspective that, some, that if you're single and not choosing to be in a relationship, there's something wrong with you. If you're in that viewpoint, this conversation won't make sense to you. It's now, let me just speak to that part just for a second. Being single, there's basically, and I would say in this conversation, when you are old enough to have relationships, there's two main reasons to be single, by reaction and by choice. And I mean this from the point of view that to be single for a lot of people is because they're so pained and hurt and upset from a past relationship breakup, they're, they're so wounded that they are basically reacting to relationship, they don't want to be around another one. And, they, and those sort of people, quite a lot of them are my clients, is where the time is to go get help, to get support, to heal those wounds once and for all. The other part of choice is where you're living your life in a way that you really are focused on your mission or purpose, which is what I've been doing for quite a while now, where being in a relationship wouldn't have been helpful at that time. And that's healthy. Now, 
there's no right, and this is my point, my perspective, there's no right or wrong about being in a relationship or being single. There's choices and there's reasons as well. And to say that you shouldn't be, you should be in a relationship because I'm wrong with you if you're not, is an extremely myopic viewpoint. I don't agree with it. However, a conscious relationship is something to aspire to. A conscious relationship with both partners ideally awake and doing their own work and having become autonomous whole beings, which is what we're not, not normally are when we're kids, and some people don't grow out of that stage. When you have become that, that's a possibility of having an awakened conscious relationship. I wish that on anybody who's willing to do the work, or has already started doing the work. There was something in there I wanted to say that was a bit snippety. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Simply put, you can have a relationship at any level you want. If you are comfortable being in a convenient codependent relationship, go for it. If you're watching my broadcast, you probably realize that's not what you want because that's what I don't talk about. I don't talk about that in a positive way. I'm actually, I challenge people to grow out of that stage, to be blunt. But if you want a conscious relationship, more and more people are becoming more awake in the sense of they're doing personal work. So that you see themselves more whole and they're not, they're not, they're not, I can say this in another way. Somebody who's not conscious, somebody who's not aware of their own beingness. So they don't realize that they're upsetting other people's feelings. They're not aware of the things that they're not owning up to. They're not healing their own stuff. Um, to be totally blunt about it, a lot of straight white men are in that boat because us straight white men, because I am a straight white man, although I'm Jewish, not the usual Christian style, have for a long time been viewed as being whole and perfect, which is not true. Everybody has stuff to work on. doesn't matter what your gender, color, or anything else is. So the straight white male was the least challenged group to evolve and grow and become aware. Whereas women, gay, minorities of, of color, all these different flavors of people have, you, have had more um, shade thrown on them, so to speak, have been dumped on. So they've been more committed to a path of growth, so to speak. And frankly, the straight white males get left behind. That was a bombshell I just dropped without telling and realizing it. <laughs> the evolution of this planet is moving that way. Anyway, let's get back to the topic at hand. I just went off and I just saw a vision of something I don't want to talk about right now, but you got you got a glimpse, I'm sure. So let me just speak it to this way: conscious relationship is a choice. Being in a conscious relationship requires that you step up to a level of autonomy and self ownership, so that you look in your own mirror and see who you really are. You see yourself as a whole being. You act like that, and you work through anything that's in the way of you being able to function, so you can be whole. Um, healthy in a way, and really taking care of yourself. A conscious relationship does require a choice and both partners need to choose in. And this is the thing, if you're a conscious person, choosing into a relationship with an unconscious person, so to speak, it doesn't work. Which is why it's almost impossible to do, to not, it's almost impossible not to do a conscious relationship if you're a conscious person. Being conscious in the work, and I'm talking about doing this work and growing and learning and evolving, requires you to find a part of that matches you there. It's so hard not to, to, pl to play other ways. I know I've been trying that a little bit. I've been on a few, just to be transparent, I've been on a few dates from dating apps and matchmakers. It's hard to, hard to quantify and qualify it, but I've had to say um, this isn't working because they haven't done any work. That's not to judge, it's just a choice. So a conscious relationship does require both partners to choose in. But it's where the fun is. I think I'll leave it there for now. I've got more to talk about, but that's going to come up another time. So this is a seed I'm planting to make you think about this because for, frankly, when I work with my clients, my focus on my clients is to help them really grow consciously in their own self-awareness and self-fulfillment so they can become more whole and more autonomous in their own beingness so they can attract amazing relationships. Those wounded people I talked about earlier, they're the ones that come in that way, they don't come out that way with me. They may, they may come to me with those wounds and hurt and feelings, but they, when they finish working with me, they're more conscious and aware of their own beingness and they're able to handle stuff in a way that is more powerful. If that appeals to you, I have an opportunity, I'll put a link in the comments below, to, to have a discovery session with me. One of my gifts is to offer discovery sessions every time. It's a 30 minute conversation, my gift to you. We talk, if there's alignment, and we want to work together, we do. If not, we don't. That's simple. And that's barryselby.com forward slash chat. And a quick reminder that I've been promoting for the last few weeks. I'm offering uh, my self-love um, practice. It's a mirror meditation with guided audio, audio tracks on my website, which I highly recommend if you want to build up your own self-love reservoirs. 
reservoirs. Yes, reservoirs. If you go to barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word, that will also be a place you can sign up for that. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a Facebook Live initially that goes onto YouTube and onto my podcast, so I need to know where to find them. On my Facebook page, my business page, where these go to, go to live after I do the live broadcast on my personal page, and that business page is barryselby.author on Facebook. I then repurpose them, put them onto YouTube, and that is my channel is Barry Selby. All my social media is Barry Selby, by the way. Um, and the chat, the playlist on on uh, YouTube is Messages from the Masculine. That's also the name of the podcast on iTunes. You can find it there. You can subscribe and download my broadcast there. I'm, I'm building up the library there. There's way more. The videos are always updated. So every day my Facebook Live and then my YouTube channel are updated. My podcast has a lot of catching up to do. So with that, I wish you well. Again, you've got the links. You can check out my stuff. I do invite you to take care of yourself more and learn to be more autonomous, more whole, and more conscious because you'll attract a match to that, which is what you really want, I believe. Of course, I may be judging that you should be. <laughs> but truth is that relationships are evolving. The quality of relationships are evolving. And the work that you do to support yourself and own and become more whole is adding to that. So go out and love better. <laughs> love more consciously, let's put it that way. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day. And I appreciate you being here. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.